Thank you, Samsung, for doing this. We needed this. Very good news for everybody, not just Samsung fans. So we have some news about Samsung's upcoming chipsets, which is a huge deal for many reasons. We know right now about Samsung's Exynos woes. The Exynos chipsets just lagging behind the Snapdragon chipsets. They're way behind in terms of power and power efficiency, and they just lag the Snapdragon versions of Samsung phones, which is obviously not good for customers in Exynos markets. We'll get into all of that in a second though. First, let's have a look at these uh, test results from some new Samsung chipsets that will be using these new AMD GPUs. So in some synthetic benchmarks, the AMD GPUs scored uh, a score of 181 frames per second in a test called Manhattan 3.1, which is versus the Snapdragon chipsets at 154 frames a second. So the AMD chipsets actually outperform the Snapdragons by 13% in that test. But have a look at this second test that was run. It's not even close. The AMD GPUs in that test scored 138 frames per second at the high rate and the normal rate of 58 frames a second. But have a look at the Snapdragon scores, 58 frames a second and 20 frames a second. So that means the AMD GPUs were three times better in that test than the uh, GPUs currently found in the Snapdragon 865. Three times better for a GPU. Now put that GPU into a chipset with some ARM CPUs and you have an absolute monster. That will honestly be a total King Kong beast of a chipset and that's really good news for everybody because it is massively important because right now snapdragon have basically a monopoly over chipsets in the android world if you want to make a flagship smartphone and you're not samsung then it is probably a hundred percent certain to contain a snapdragon chipset even the vast majority of mid-range type of phones are using snapdragon chipsets this year, Qualcomm has such a stranglehold on the industry that they pumped up the price of the Snapdragon 865 a ridiculous amount. They forced the whole industry to adopt 5G when 5G networks aren't available. Prices have gone up. They forced everyone to buy a Snapdragon chipset with a Qualcomm modem. Everything is expensive and that is because Qualcomm have no competitors. They basically enforced a massive price hike across the whole Android industry, which is why now iPhones are looking quite a good deal considering the price to performance. Android brands have absolutely no choice in this matter and the people that genuinely lose out are customers, us, no matter what market you're in, Exynos or Snapdragon when related to Samsung. If Samsung can make a really competitive chipset, which this next chipset from Samsung, so next year in the Galaxy S21 series, looks to be competitive, incredibly good GPUs, ARM designed CPUs, a competitive chipset going head to head with Snapdragon chipsets. We could see some competition at last, prices even coming down or becoming more affordable and more power. So this is definitely a good thing for everybody. Last night, we got some big news regarding OnePlus's new mid-range phone, which is called the OnePlus Z. And a lot of people are looking out for this phone, really looking forward to this phone. It's going to be a real OnePlus phone that is bang for your buck, more affordable. The OnePlus 8 series are now just flagship phones and very expensive because they're using that Snapdragon 865. But this phone is going to be different. Up until now, every news outlet, every leak, every source has pointed towards OnePlus using the Dimensity 1000 chipset in that phone from, uh, from MediaTek. But last night we got the news, it won't be that chipset at all. It's gonna be the Snapdragon 765. This was leaked online by Max J, who is very accurate when it comes to OnePlus leaks. So we can be fairly confident that this is going to happen. He also shared this picture of what it looks to be a promo picture that's gonna go along with the launch. On this picture anyway, it says the Snapdragon 765, not the 765G. So maybe not even as powerful as the 765G a slightly less powerful chipset maybe, which means really all in all, this phone should be quite cheap. It needs to be cheap anyway, because this type of phone just has so much competition and really in this part of the market, it's all about the price. Chinese smartphone maker Xiaomi is in the news because according to Forbes anyway, 
Xiaomi may be collecting their customers' data without letting them know a lot too much data and sending it back to their own servers. Not, not a good one. According to Forbes anyway, and the report, browser data, also browser data went in incognito mode. Not just browser data though, but any folders that you've opened, settings that you've changed, screens that you've used, and music that you've played in the music app is data that could be collected by Xiaomi and sent back to their servers, which obviously, I'm sure not many people know that they're signed up to that sort of data information going back to Xiaomi. Xiaomi did respond to all of this though and say that they do comply with all the local laws in the relevant regions that they operate in. Xiaomi also said that the data that they do collect cannot be traced back to a specific individual. And in fact, a lot of the data that they collect is very normal within the industry and it helps them to essentially upgrade and differentiate their products based on the way that the users use the system. Yeah, so Forbes said they're doing something wrong. Xiaomi's saying, no, we're not doing anything wrong. We're complying with the laws and this is very normal. So I don't know, are you worried about it or not? That is it for your tech news today. Subscribe to the other channel for more content and I'll see you next time.